It's the Mike Wills Podcast. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Mike Wills Podcast. This is another ham radio one. Uh, I still almost want to say the Dog Days Podcast. I don't know why, but whatever. Um, so I am wx 0 M I. Uh, K, <laughs> um, and Whiskey X-Ray Zero, Mike India Kilo, and I had some thoughts today while I was driving uh, to a nearby town that has some really good butcher shops. <clears throat> I was getting some uh, beef roast to smoke uh, tomorrow. <clears throat> anyway, the thought occurred to me. Um. I should reframe this. A lot of... I do a lot of uh, following along with groups on uh, Facebook about uh, ham radio. And a common theme that happens is the repeaters are dead. No one's using the repeaters. Oh, sorry. No, you know, no one's replying to me when I call out. And, I mean, there's multiple reasons. One, a lot of amateur radio operators are introverts, and we don't like to talk to new people. And we, as in the group, not necessarily we, including me, but whatever, um, that's always a problem that will always be a problem. Um, On the other hand... I have a realization here today, and it just hit me, and I didn't even think about prior to that, but a lot of these repeaters, even in my area, I was um, making calls out this morning, nothing. It's like, well, that's strange, but eh, whatever. Look over my digital radio, and it just, I don't want to say going nuts, but it was busy. There was people talking all the time. And I started thinking about it, like, wait a minute, the repeaters aren't necessarily dead, they're just not using analog anymore, and the um, a lot of the uh, hams that were tr- getting out there were saying this Bofang UV5R, these bo- uh, basically any of the Bofang radios, like, hey man, that's a great starter radio, it'll get you on the repeaters, um, except I am wondering if we're not doing a little bit of disservice here, because we're telling, oh yeah, absolutely, this is a great radio, and it is, do not get me wrong, it totally is a good radio, however, it is um, not a good radio if three quarters of your interactivity is with um, people using digital repeaters. That will lead to issues. So now we're we're telling people, yes, yes, absolutely do this. And there's nobody on. So I think what you know when we a lot of these groups they say the same things anyway like yeah these are good radios talk to your local club and see what they recommend and that gets to another problem that I didn't really was going to cover here but so it's, it's up to these clubs these local hams That really should be routing the um, these younger, these newer hams coming in and saying, you know what, that's a great radio. I still recommend having one for blah, blah situations. But honestly, if you want to make a lot of contacts, I highly recommend you get, a, I'll just throw a couple of technologies, a DMR because in our area... DMR is well used 
I can help you get it programmed. I can uh, tell you which rooms we're active in, and then you can get get going and talking to people on a regular basis. Um, same thing with fusion. Um, my particular area is actually more fusion based, and it's not the my local club that's really on it. At least kind of the people I've been hanging out and talking to the most. But there's another um, in the next town over that is all talking about digital, digital, digital. And talking to them a little bit, it's like, yeah, if I used to start listening, they are talking all the time. I have my analog spinning, uh, or scanning, I should say, looking for um, signals. And then I have the digital one just going nuts on one station. <sighs> because everyone's on digital. <clears throat> so the other problem I talked about with clubs is some are not welcoming to new people. And that's a whole different issue. Um, unfortunately, that happens. Um, I looked at the average age of the club that... I am looking to join. Um, the youngest is 16. He is brand new ham. The next oldest, um, I'll be uh, generous and say that he's in his 30s. And you could say I'm in my 30s, even though it's at the bitter end. Um, that's kind of the next generation there is the 30s. And then after that, um, I would say minimum 50, if not much older. So you kind of look at these, quote, old cranky guys. They don't want to talk to this young punk that wants to be on such such thing. They want to talk HF. And that's the other thing I learned at my last club meeting. Sorry if I'm a little quiet. I'm turning my head here. Um is our website and I, I found the history oh, what the hell get your own damn lane um there used to be two clubs in Mankato and they joined it into one website one uh, I don't remember the names of them but um one was exclusively HF they want nothing to do with uh VHF UHF repeater systems and all that stuff they, so there was two clubs that were formed, but they kind of shared one website for whatever reason. And as things happen, when you got the old guys wanting to, that one thing, fortunately, unfortunately, however you want your perspective is on the, on the thing, they die off. And all of a sudden they're like, you know, you get the younger crowd in here and now they're talking everything. So, it, you may just have a bunch of old cranky guys who don't want to deal with this repeater crap. And they just have them because they got a good deal and they figure for their, um, for their uh, emergency management stuff that they need one. So, you have these old guys who really don't give a darn. And they're uh, not going to be so willing to teach these new hams anything. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Just came from outside. Pick up my groceries. We'll talk about that next. Um, so, but that also turns off on young hams because they're... Like, oh, people help you. You know, they hear all this positive stuff. And then they get to reality and they find out that it's not as they have been told and I hope I just didn't lose my eggs <coughs> so um, yeah it's it's a, a catch-22 in some cases but um, really what I think I am going to be doing now with this revelation is I am going to start Promoting, A, yes, you can get the cheap 
Chinese radio and at least start talking to people on the radio. But if you are only going to be able to afford to buy one thing, talk to your local club. You may and might be you might find it safer to spend a little more money and get a digital radio if it's going to set you up for better success. Um, hindsight on my side, yes and no. I kind of wish I got Fusion Radio right away. Um, but on the other hand, I got to know more people in the Mankato club who are more pro analog than um, pro digital. On the other hand, on the digital side, you know, I've been in nets in the care or with, on nets it, that are hosted within the Caribbean. I've been on nets that I don't even know where they're hosted out of, and they're uh, worldwide. I uh, Ham Nation that's on Twit. I uh, started join their digital net a little bit. Same deal. It's just kind of fun to talk to or listen to other people from around the world. Literally. Now, could you argue it's not, quote, truly uh, radio? Yeah, you can. Uh, You know, if you're thinking HF radio is the only way you can talk worldwide, but even that is has a lot of times people are doing only digital. <clears throat> because of, um, we're in a low sun cycle right now, so um, I don't exactly 100% know what that means. But as I'm understanding it, just the uh, sun isn't putting out as much uh, solar, whatever, that charges are the ion the ions in the ionosphere and because of that <clears throat> the radio propagation has gone down significantly everyone says it's not like not like it was and I'm like I don't know what you're talking about I don't know what you mean because I'm hearing every day a people saying oh the bands are dead and then next time or, and then uh, five seconds later, they put their call out on whatever frequency, and all of a sudden they're working on pileup. Uh, pileup, for those who aren't sure, don't know, is when you have multiple people all trying to make a contact with you at basically the same time. It takes uh, it's a little different skill set required to start working a pileup like that, because you got to kind of pick out one out of twenty voices all talking to you and you gotta say okay uh M-I-K you're uh the person ending in M-I-K you're next <clears throat> and hope you only get one I've heard some people say okay I heard uh Delta something Delta only and then he's a Delta Alpha and then they get down to one person so it depends on what you're thinking about Absolutely, a lot of these digital modes, as people are using them, if the internet is down, they're not going to work like that. And it is something that I hope most hams consider as they use it. However, I did uh, ask the question, both Fusion and DMR (coughs) can work, A, without internet, (coughs) and B, they can work point to point. So, point to point being simplex, or I'm standing here a mile away, someone else is standing, and you can talk directly to the radio like your old fashioned walkie talkies work. Only you're in digital. So, that uh, does help that process as well. Oh boy, this is going to be a long one. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what I'm starting to think as I am navigating this wonderful world of amateur radio. 
<clears throat> and sometimes you just need time to sit there, think, listen, and all of a sudden you come up with another brainwave, as I call them. So, uh, back to, oh, I was just picking my groceries. Uh, I'm sure more and more people are getting this, but uh, we've started to do the, uh, not the grocery delivery, but we still go pick it up. But uh, the grocery pickup. So you, um, you know, you go online, you go shopping, you're basically putting on just what you need, and then you um, pay for it, you go pick it up, and you go home. The nice thing is, you, um, you're you not walking around like, oh, I kind of want this, oh, I kind of want that. And all of a sudden, you're, well, today was a little bit different scenario. But we, at first, like, well, we need a minimum $35. Well, so we started adding a couple things. Then all of a sudden, like, well, we might as well get, uh, hit the next step up because they had a rebate day or something like that. Or they're, uh, they get to do the gas thing where you get gas, gas discounts and they had a Mac a day where you get more. So we did crank it up more. We added a few more things to the list to get up to kind of that next level. But it's been really nice because it's kind of cheaper in the long run because you're not spending money on things that are impulse buys. You're only getting most of what you need, maybe a couple other items, but that's about it. So it's really nice for that. Um, unfortunately, sometimes you got to make a special trip to town to go get it. Um, but we wanted to try and get up today or yet rather than waiting till tomorrow. Oh man. So <clears throat> back to the amateur radio. If your repeater is dead, maybe you should look to see what kind of digital is floating around. And a lot of times you can just tell right in the repeater book what's kind of popular. And Maybe approach getting uh, that digital radio, and all of a sudden it might become much bigger, uh, much bigger, um, more fun experience, I guess. So I am going to sign off here. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry for the yawning. <clears throat> I am recording at 7 30 at night, it's been kind of a busy day for me. So I'm going to sign off here and um, return your ears to normal whatever it is you're listening to. And this is um, 7 threes from WX0MIK. Uh, I'll freak I'll the frequency now. The intro music was Funkily Dugatitude by the late Derek K. Miller. The outro is Always Evermore by Eric Dietrich. You can contact me on most social networks with the username Mike Wills, one word. You can email me at mike at mikewills.me. You can find any show notes and my blog at mikewills.me. Thank you for listening and come back again. <laughs>